Welcome team. Let me start with SAP GTS. Let me give more details into SAP GTS. See, GTS is a high level of integrations with multiple models. Okay, it is integrated with SAP, ECC. I can say also, in other words, it is also integrated with the non-ERP systems, non-legacy system and legacy system. GTS is, has a capable of getting integrated with SAP ECC, S4 HANA, any kind of e-commerce platforms, any kind of, I can say, APO systems, EWM, CRM system, CA system, and also with any kind of third-party systems. And also system, GTS system has a very beautiful, I can say setups or can say feasibility that can be connected to any of the world. I can say the custom servers, government authorized servers. Okay, now, okay, now when I'm going purely into the GTS systems, I won't go much into SAP, ST or ECC or any other models, but yes, I will directly come into the SAP GTS part. So overall team, like from of both of you, one has already some knowledge in GTS and one is very new, but still I'll go with the details. See GTS came into picture once when the our World Trade Organizations was attacked in 2001. I mean to say 2001. So before that, what used to happen team? Still that time before that also, the business used to happen from client side business. Yes, I can say both from exports, imports, shipments, declarations, everything used to happen, but the, through the paperwork. But when this attack has happened, there are a lot of risk factor jumped into the systems. I mean to say system in here means it's not SAP system. It is to the global platform that is country specific, sector specific, product specific, license specific, and in person specific as well. Okay. So these are all the major factors came into picture where all the countries changed the drastically their rules, regulations, procedures and the product what they're using defining it into very specific or differentiating it at coding levels code levels which can only the wto what i can say like world trade uh, organizations and with a collaboration with un okay united nations of organization i can say all came into picture and came with the new rules okay now when this global trade picture came into in the market so sap took a lot of time almost two years to design this kind of new product of sap okay before that yes that point can raise how that SAP was using with these global trades. Yes, there was the feasibility within the SAP ECC, both from the sales flow and both from the procurement flow. I can say from ST and MM flow. Both the side the flow was there, but still there were a lot of, I can say, demerits was there, which was not able to overcome when these kind of changes came into picture. Clear team? Uh, yeah, uh, Jay, I just have a question. So you okay. meant like after after this uh, World Trade uh, Organization mm -hmm. incident, there were a lot of changes, right? So uh, what kind of changes uh, uh, had happened or is it also like, is that the part of the training about? Yes, uh, I will uh, give you the one of the reason. See, before this 2021, there was no such kind of a rating of the passport. For example, I'm just giving it. the rating of a passport of a country. We have a designated it. As of now, we are having more than 250 countries in the world. Whereas in UN, we have having more, one, more than 198 countries as a member of the UN, similar to world trade. Based on all this, 
global okay from one of the example the passport i can say the ranking of a passport was not considered before but after all these things un came with one of the scenario like passport also can be a one of the reason okay let me give one more example everyone was knowing like we are doing export or sales from from sales point of view the in the sales office the person who is putting a order from the warehouse picking and selling it but we don't know where is the end the end customer okay now i'm selling one of the product to any of the country and that product is going to the wrong hands which can fall under i can say as a terror funding okay or arms military activities into the wrong hands so that was not in control before okay as we all know we are in sap there is a visibility transparency from each and every flow but in gts there was no kind of setups i can say within ecc what we are using that there was no kind of clarity or the visibility because you don't know who is the end customer what kind of product we are selling for example we are selling suppose my client is or my client business into semiconductor i am selling that semiconductor but i don't know where it can be used it can be used into agriculture product or also it can be used into military any of the activities so that kind of setup was not being designed before 2021 after 2021 this became a very complex kind of scenarios where globally these rules came into picture is it clear to you dipti or do you have any open yeah, open yeah, point yeah. Hmm? Okay. yeah thank you so much thank you no problem if you have any doubts uh, dipti and uh, hari you can make me to hold and we can discuss on that okay yeah so so this after that i can say Uh, i'll come to this slide but to first i'll go to this slide one step before after okay now say we uh, we all know like though we are working in sap we know sap has started in 1972 and okay it took some one decade to get it set up into the market and then now it is a, like a uh, market leading erp product what it is into and we do not have multiple kind of i can say versions i as i know like initially it versions was four version then we have four five version then six and we are getting now into eight version we are having but with multiple enhancement packages or service packs what we are getting in as per that but in gts it's not like that in just started in 2003 and from 2003 to till now in two decades it has come with multiple versions that is with version 3 version 7 7.1 7.2 8 10 10.1 now the market leading is with 11 version now let me give the brief on it. why so much of versions in gts is coming up why not with other erp systems the reason is because of the countries frequently changing their rules and new products like every country every people are going with new kind of innovations innovating some new kind of product comes into picture okay that kind of innovations product comes with a new codes that kind of code setups are not possible with the existing or new rules that comes it's not possible then it comes with a new versions let me give a recent example hope you all aware in european union there were before 28 countries including uk but now uk is no more into the european union it is out of european union now it is 27 as european union and uk what we call as a gb great britain is out of european union and yes we call it as a brexit okay now again when this brexit came out of european union the rules and regulations of the uk is changed where sap cannot support it similarly if any other countries are getting with the new rules 
or new setups. So it becomes a complex. This is the major reason they come with the multiple versions. Clear team? Yes, sir. Ari, is it clear to you? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, correct. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So now I'll go to the previous screen. Now, CT, what happens? Whenever this, see, in the globally, there is two things, either export or import. We do not have anything else, okay? We all know that, okay, either we are exporting or importing. But there is some additional kind of things also, which is called as a re-export process. I'm just taking the product, changing something, my labeling, or designing it to something, and I'm reselling it. Re-export processes, okay? So this is, again, comes to new rules. Like presently, we are procuring, India is procuring the petroleum product from the Russia, and it is reselling it to the other countries. For example, I'm just saying. So in this kind of scenario, new kind of processes comes into picture, where it is, not possible within the ECC system. Hope oh, we all know what is intra-company process. In the, I can say like third-party IPO, dropship scenarios. These are different kind of process which can be set up within ECC, but it is not possible when we perform the re-export processes. So basically, what I mean to say, you team here, this is a kind of a international trade level kind of a discussions. It happens. So when this international trade level discussion happens or any kind of border crossing, both the countries, the supplier country and the receiver country will come to some of the rules. Regulations has to be followed by both the countries. Means the shipment which is being processed need to follow both the country rules. Okay. Also, now, every country say or put the pressure, like for example, though I'm from India, I'll say something about India, like now the startup industries, which are comes into picture or any other country. Globally, it is a, like, a, I can see, they will see like how much startup countries are being into the market coming into picture. Now, what does the startup industry work happens or what is they do or they get the benefit when they do perform the export processes because when we perform the export process to other country other country has to pay us the duty but when we procure the things we have to pay the duty to the third party countries so this kind of duty setups are not possible in the ECC sites. Okay. So now immediately in your mind, it will come. So, hey, Jay, now, now it is fine in GTS, but before in GTS, how used to happen? Yes, before in GTS, before GTS, it was being handled by this. You can see the second point that is with SAP, SD and MM foreign trade models. But yes, there are a lot of demerits are there. Let me give some of the demerits and then the benefits of the SAP GTS. Now, same. suppose recently, as per UN, the law has been passed like Russia is into now, now the sanction list. And some of the countries have set it as a Crimea country. Crimea country as a into sanction list. But let me tell you, there is no country as Crimea. But the Crimea country is only your Ukraine. Okay. But at the UN level, they call it as a, for Ukraine, they call it as a Crimea as a name as, Ilya's name you can say as to that. Okay. So now, Cuba, Venezuela, Belarus, okay, Iran, North Korea, so these kind of countries are into the block. But 
block means what we are not supposed to do any business with them any country but again its own country interest but globally we are not supposed to do any business with them even yes syria also is one of that so this kind of setup was not there within the sap st and M. there were demerits for example we are putting an order okay it is going to ship to party but again ship to party we have an end customer for end customer suppose we are exporting our product to uae and from uae this product is going to syria as an end customer there is no check no block nothing in sap ecc it can be done so that time the shipment team okay in the warehouse they will check where this is going and because of that most of the client used to have they used to pay the penalty to the governments okay again now the point comes like if i'll say some of the word, person's names like daud ibrahim okay munir sakir so these kind of persons are i can say designated as a under terrorist okay that can be because it it is under like uh, under terror act or financial fraud or i can say it's a like labor act because of labor act like we can say there are a lot of acts also there okay which are these persons are being under your sanctions you are not supposed to do any business so this kind of setup is also not was not possible in sap ecc clear to yeah okay other and there are few more demerits i'll tell you in gts like while crossing the border okay let me tell one thing like suppose we are crossing any of the states or borders what is to do we used to give payment manually or we have to submit our papers then we have to cross the border line okay and it takes lot of time it kills the time where there becomes a delay of the shipment to the customer okay and also if it is there there is any kind of uh, incorporated products then the shipment will be on hold okay or they have to declare it before crossing the border no doubt that time also scj industries was there but complexity of product to which country where again it becomes a challenges this setups was also not available but now in gts it is available under your customs management okay and very product specific or country specific or in person specific are being set up under your compliance management clear now let's come to me let's come to the other kind of global processes hope team we all are aware of new kind of agreements happens into the market okay like i can say quad happened nafta to european union it's a is a kind of a group of countries with they go with some kind of a agreement okay like i to you to okay or tapi kind of agreement or i can say sark is one kind of an agreement so this kind of in the world there are lot of agreements are there it is now more than more than 400 agreements in the global market now what will this agreement do team this agreements all this group of they will form a group of country like brick we are all aware of brick countries group of countries they all will this group of country will say together they will come to an agreement that on specific this kind of sectors or uh, and from this sectors this kind of products they will perform that trading within themselves and they will be duty 
minimal duty they have to pay. It's not like they cannot, they should not pay the duty. They have to pay the duty, but with some kind of minimal duties. Okay. And also it becomes a less kind of risk factor. This all comes to your under risk management. Also, there is a very big concept which we call as a letter of credit. Hope you team aware of letter of credit, what it is. Oh, no, not me. Okay, no problem. About you, Hari? No problem. Let me give just a glimpse on it. Now, suppose I'm performing a trading overseas trading. I'm selling my product to an overseas customer. For example, I'm selling it to Sri Lanka or I can say to Singapore. Okay. The customer of Singapore has a place order to India and my I'm selling my product to the customer. See, there is a, every kind of possibilities or probabilities are there. Now, let's give me one probability. I will sell my product to the customer. Is there any guarantee that customer will pay me back? Uh, no. Okay. In the reverse manner, if customer is paying me the money, is there any chance I will, is that any guarantee I will pay my or sell my goods to the customer on time? There is also no guarantee, right? So in this case, both the consignee and the consigner will come to an agreement that consigner means the person or the who sell the product, consigning who receive, receives the good or the product. The consigner bank and the receiver bank will come to an agreement together. That is what it is called a letter of credit. They will exchange each other the letter of credit to them. And that makes the risk very less. Because if the goods are sold and he's, the customer is not paying, then bank will pay directly to this bank. If customer has paid the money and the consigner has not sold or delayed, so consigner bank will send back the money to the consignment. That is what it is called the letter of credit. Clear, Titi? Okay. Yeah, understood. Now, now I'll just, this is all what about I discussed, okay? This slide. Like I can say it is about uh, reducing the risk, communicating directly to the custom authorities through electronic manner. So, which reduces you the time and no waiting at the like border level for getting your product to be cleared or with the approvals, nothing. So, this is all about, and yes, free trade agreement is nothing but falls under your risk management. Okay. Now, in GTS, there are, yes, there are three models. You are aware of it, compliance, customs, and risk. Okay, in custom compliance, that is sanction party list, embargo, legal controls, whereas customs, that is product classifications, custom export, import, special custom procedure, and trade document services. In risk, preference management, restitutions, and letter of credit. I'll just give brief about it. Hope you are aware of it, but still. In compliance management, sanction party list will on the denied customers to which all customers globally we are not supposed to do the business if we are doing then we are going against to the rule of my country then my client has to be will pay the penalize to the government sometimes it may happen that client industry will also may go into, they may shut down also. 
So that is also comes to sanction party list. This basically to the denied customers to whom with whom we should not perform any kind of business. Next comes to your embargo. Embargo is to the blocked countries, which all the blocked are there. <coughs> I'm sorry. We are not supposed to do business. Yes. Again, it is on country to country interest. For example, we have a block globally with Syria, Belarus, Venezuela, North Korea, Cuba, okay, now into Russia. They are all into the block. But before block, now suppose they are into the block, but now we are not supposed to do all the business. But when it comes to point of humanity, like in pandemic, what it happened, we can sell them the food and beverage. We can sell them or we can export medicals, equipments, medicines, everything. Again, that is to the country interest. Okay. For that kind of scenarios, yes, it is a you know, different kind of process is there. Same as into the sanction parties. Okay. Now coming to the legal controls, it means to the very specific to the product. Every product should have a license license in the sense now suppose i am having a pharma outlet where i can sell the medical products to end customers but to have a pharmaceutical outlet i should have a license for that and also i should have a license to sell it also Similarly, the manufacturing industry should have a license to manufacture that product. They should have a license to sell that product. Without any license, we are not supposed to perform anything. Any kind of product when it comes to the export or to the import. Also, I will add some more things here. In compliance, the sanction party list and legal control are also applicable to the domestic country. Now, for example, Italy. Italy is following the global, global flow of SPL and legal controls. But again, within the Italy country, they have to follow, they have to check the sanction party level to whom they are selling the product. In India, if I'm having one business, yes, fine. I can do export, I can do import. But if I want to sell into the domestic point of view, I should also go with the SPL check and legal control checks. Clear, Dipti? Yeah. And hope you are into custom management. So you are well aware of what is product classifications, custom export, import, right? Okay. But say, let me tell what it is. Product classification will identify the nature of your product. What is this product is about? For example, I'm exporting tire. Okay, rubber, rubber tire. I'm selling it from France to Great Britain. Okay, GB. Now, that product, what they're selling at the border crossing, they will see the custom authority will not understand what is the product inside. But the commodity code or the STS code, what we call at a product, that is will be assigned to one of the code. That what we call as a STS code or a commodity code. So these codes will give it nature of a product. For example, I was just saying, the rubber, it is selling at a cross border. Again, to that product, rubber, it is being used for the aircraft, not for any other sector. Okay. It is not for any kind of submarines or any kind of industrial uses, or it's not kind of any kind of agriculture uses, for example, or not for any of the pharma pharmaceutical equipments. But it is only for the aircrafts. Again, in aircraft, it is inside aircraft need to be used or outside used to be used. For example, outside need to be used, it can be your tire or a belt or for the prop level, okay? Or for, I can say wind, um, wind machines, whatever it may be, okay? Within the aircraft, 
again it can be your seat cover it can be your belt it can be your protective i can say covers there are lot of things are there so again when it is goes to step to down to down the nature of the product changes okay so that gives the nature of a product that product nature need to be assigned to a code that code only the custom authority will understand either in case of export or import okay now that comes to the is it clear to you Deepthi? yeah it's uh, clear but i have a question this commodity code uh, uh, details do they maintain it in ecc or uh, in gts okay the <clears throat> i can say before sap gts was not there they used to maintain in sap ecc okay with that i, I can say lsmw and all they will get this file informations and they will upload but now in gts when gts already being in market the clients using gts they will upload in gts first and from gts it will move back to your ecc we have designated program in built programs that will work out and that will send this product which are assigned to any of the commodity code will be moved to the ecc and it will upload in your marc table and the field will be staw okay. that is your commodity codes yes okay. but i one thing i will need to add here that this commodity codes will be provided by the or sts code will be provided by the data providers this data provider are responsible to every time to send the updated files country specific and that need to be uploaded in the system okay yeah got it thank you why i will give one more example to this because see if i say now purse okay like it's a but suppose in the commodity code the description was as a purse but now they have changed it to as wallet product is same nature has become some change or they can make it as okay the last digit as uh, i can say 01 is for purse and 02 is for your wallets or vanity bags or whatever nature is same but the change in the product or the i can say the change in the descriptions this is also as kind of update this update has to be provided by the data providers okay <clears throat> now we are moving to the what is special custom procedure see there are high level of custom procedures apart from your a custom export and imports that is your bonded warehouse ipr process opr process pucc let me show you all that so this is what i was speaking about your spls and embargo legal controls that is every product will have one of the license okay special procedures that is for i can say bonded warehouse ipr what we can see here sorry you can you can see here bonded warehouse ipr it is inward processing relief opr outward processing relief pucc processing under custom controls these are very high level of custom management processes okay but let me give some glimpse about what is bonded warehouse ipr or opr pucc now bonded warehouse will come into picture uh, 
when suppose i'm procuring a product from singapore to india and from india i'm just changing the level i'm not changing the product uh, nature of the product means i'm not deassembling and reassembling and sharing it no the product as it is i'm bringing i'm just changing the leveling and i'm reselling okay but again to this kind of product i have a limitations within this i have to sell it if i am selling it taking it up and because of some reason i am selling it within my domestic country then i have to pay the duty but if i am procuring from country a and i am reselling it back to country c then i have not to pay the duty taxes that is what it is called the bonded warehouses this bonded warehouse can be within your client location or it can be in your custom bonded warehouse means the custom authority will give a specific space for you at a bond warehouse level but most of the client they will keep this warehouse in their own place 99% they will use it they are, because they have to change the leveling the packaging only they will change only the packaging clear okay yeah mm. tell me please no no that's it nothing okay. ipr processes means we are going to procure some of the product as a raw material speaking need we should manufacture it but with a stipulated period of time like we have taken the product raw material product or any kind of finished product we are going to redesign it to something but with a period of time like within 2 months or 3 months or 5 months or 1 year if i am losing that period then i have to pay the tax to the government or within that period i am able to do and resell it to uh, to other countries then i have not to pay the taxes to them in bonded warehouse i was just changing the packaging but here i have will be manufacturing opr will happen like some of the product i have procured from the outside i have partially i have done it remaining partial part will be done in another country it will go there it will finish it to the completed and again it will come back to me within a period and again i have to sell it within that period for example i can say some kind of um, petroleum products or gasoline products suppose we are procuring the petroleum raw product to us okay but we do not have that kind of machineries okay what we will do we will take that product we will refine up to some extent okay and we will send it back to my third country that product will get into more filtration and it will come back to me then i will sell that product but that also need to be within a specific period if i'm losing that period then i have to pay the tax that is outward processing really pucc is again very 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 complex so i'm not going to that so hope it is clear to you about this bonded warehouse ipr opr high level of processes okay now trade documents see there are two things export import falls under customs i agree but again there is one more thing what we call as a transit process in transit process is also used in your export process and import process now for example in european union i'm just giving one of the example every country will have its own custom authorities like netherlands will have ags or uh, great britain will have cef like the different kind of they will have also whole european union will have one custom authority that what we call as atlas now it is i think it is atlas 8 new version okay but again when it comes to transit process 
for transit process again it will be a to a new custom servers that what we call as ncts i'm speaking about european union but yes very every country will have their own specific uh, transit custom departments or government departments i cannot take a specific word as custom but yes transit government departments i can say who will require specific kind of documents they need it okay clear team this part yes and also within the domestic we require some of the documentations that is your order receipt delivery chalan insurance copy pro forma copy okay these all documents are required in a domestic but when it goes to export apart from all this document additional documents also required commercial invoice packaging list certificate of origin shipper instruction letter okay uh, these are the additional documents or acknow custom acknowledgement documents cad documents these all the additional documents we required it again this is very country specific to country specific the recep gts already has given which all documents are required for which country for which process okay team the last part is your risk management which is your preference restitutions and your letter of credit basically preference what i told it's a all kind of agreements all the group of countries agreements will come because of this agreement they will fall under free trade agreement concept restitutions is basically into agricultural products for european union yes letter of credit i have discussed apart from that some additional also is there that what i can say that is interested interested is a very specific to european union which is kind of a reporting to the government authorities this interested is only specific to the european union so this is all about the gts any doubt guys uh yeah thank you so much shay for the overview uh, i just have one question um mm -hmm. so you have this gts messages right so will you also mm -hmm. be covering like how these messages uh, like the outbound messages or inbound will be integrated with the third party applications using uh, solutions like cburger or uh, how would it be okay see how the setup in gts system i can show it okay mm -hmm. and it is a part of our training also like for yeah. outbound messages or inbound message or print message everything i will be sharing mm. but yeah with the c burger and all we cannot do that because it's a third party systems mm. okay and especially c burger is a sap certified partners for all this kind of i can say it's a just a interface which is responsible yeah, yeah. sending the data to the custom authorities understanding the sap uh, field terminology converting it to as a mediator i can say converting it to the custom understandable words and updating into the respective fields hmm. but yes no where in this uh, no training sessions can give this kind of because it's a purely kind of a like uh, total complete interface within this which is not within our scope so yes we okay. can give you overview how it is yeah more. yeah because is it also like i just wanted to know is it also uh, part of uh, gts consultant responsibility to set up the mapping of this integration with cburger and third party or is it a different kind of role yes it is our responsibility okay but that would means, not be covered or 
no we cannot cover here see what it happens here dipti when we are dealing with the cbug now cbug or okay let me take in this map c burger will come into picture when you are going with the direct filings self filings mm -hmm. right when we comes to the broker filing so means what for broker also like dhl okay or feddex this kind of a third party or any kind of scj industries they are the brokers that country will follow that broker concepts but to the broker server to our sap gta server they will have some kind of interface tips like tipco lesson biz talks these are different kind of a interface tips this interface connections with us will be either through xi or through kind of a, i can say sap pipo or kind of xmls this is very different kind of setups where integration part it is not only with sap consulting point of view. because yes but we have to give the field mappings field mapping informations and all what the customer authority expecting they will give the details to the broker or to the c burger and c burger will make us like we want these all informations the mapping level by default sap has given that okay as a message message ids technical message schema if you will see technical message schema as a technical names already sap has provided but apart from that if some additional they need yes then it's a part of a consultant to design it with help of a app that field informations then that field informations will need to be connected either to the c burger or to the any kind of interface team as i said said like tipco laser or the stalker etc so they will take it up field connections mapping with help of xi pi this kind of tips okay got it okay but it's not a single team i can also it's a not a work of a single team it's a like a collaboration teams multiple yeah. like basis team will come into picture pi team will come into picture evapor will come into picture yes as a functional you will be also as a part of it and again like partner roles you have to take, do do it okay in w20 and all then you can make it with the port connections the airport r port for both exports and imports then it will work on okay this kind of information you can only figure it out in the real time servers got it thank you ji thank you